For once, Nvidia and AMD are trying to hit more of a budget-friendly market. But when you get a budget card, you also get budget performance. With AMD and NVIDIA releasing the RTX 3050 and the 6500 XT just this month, we have a lot of stats to look at. Sadly, at the time of this video, we do not have stats for the 3050. We do have some information though, and hopefully that can make your decision just a little easier. First, we have the RTX 3050. This card sits behind the underwhelming 3060 that was released in late February of 2021. With that in mind, this card is not supposed to be good. It's supposed to be affordable. This graphics card is a response to the GPU shortage of early 2022. This card comes with surprising 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM and with a very affordable price tag of $350. Its performance, however, does not seem very impressive. On the NVIDIA website, it gives us a decent insight on what we can expect. In Borderlands 3, it performs twice as well as the GTX 1650 and almost four times as well as the GTX 1050. The more concerning part of that is that the other two comparisons for the game were done with RTX on. Both the GTX 1650 and the 1050 obviously don't have RTX, so they both posted zero FPS in this test. This can be looked at in two different ways, either they're trying to be deceiving in their graph or trying to show off the RTX features. There's no way to really tell what their intent was, but it's definitely not a good look for NVIDIA. With the card you can actually buy right now, we have the RX 6500 XT. This is the lower end card of the 6600 XT, which actually outperformed the 3060 on the video side. Since the 6500 XT is released and it's already on shelves, you already know exactly what performance you're going to get in certain games. If you have any questions about certain games, just look up a benchmark video and I'm sure you'll find one. Sadly, the RX 6500 only has 4GB of VRAM, compared to the 3050, which has 8. The RTX 3050 features a 128-bit bus, whereas the 6500 XT uses an extremely outdated 64-bit bus. Basically what a bus size is, it determines how quick the memory can be accessed per second. This could sometimes mean that certain textures don't load in as quickly, but generally in most titles you're not going to really notice that much of a difference, but you definitely need to pair this with an SSD. This plus a hard drive with those loading times will be horrendous. Another major drawback is the fact that the 6500 XT uses a 4x4 PCIe interface. That means that your CPU and motherboard have to support full PCIe 4.0 speeds to get all the performance from this card. If you're using PCIe Gen 3, you can see half the performance as 4.0. Since, like I said, the 6500 XT is already released, we know exactly which performance it gets in Borderlands 3. This is the only test that we have for the 3050, so it's all we can really compare right now. The 6500 XT averages 65 FPS in Borderlands 3, whereas the RTX 3050 achieves 10 more FPS at around 75. This might not seem like a lot, but with around a 15 to 20% difference in FPS, just with this title, we can only imagine how much FPS would differ in other titles, especially ones that are very video RAM hungry. So the real question is, are either of these cards bad? Actually, not really. So if you saw our last video, we compared new and used graphics cards based on the Time Spy performance. Yes, Time Spy isn't super reliable, but overall it gives a good understanding. Obviously, we don't know the Time Spy score yet of the 3050, but the 6500? really isn't so bad. With the 4970 in Time Spy, it's sitting right around the 5500 XT, the 1660, and the 980 Ti, as well as cards like the RX 580 and the RX 590, which this card is expected to replace. AMD is good at one thing right now, and that's putting cards actually in your cart. Just a few days after this card dropped, it's still available on Newegg, although it's not available for its original $200 MSRP, at around $269 mark, it's still a relatively good deal. With comparables like the RX 590 going for $425, the 5500 XT which is going for $375, and the 1660 which is going for $400, the $200 price tag, or the $270 price tag, isn't even that bad. Almost to the point that if I see this card at $200, I might just buy one for myself. Obviously, you just have to make sure that you're putting this with newer hardware that supports PCIe Gen 4. But with all that said and done about AMD, let's look at the 3050. With the RTX 3050 being retailed at $250, or that being their original MSRP, we can expect that manufacturers are going to charge a nice premium. With everything we've seen from the 3050, I think it's going to be worth the wait. That extra VRAM is going to mean a lot, and when it just comes down to raw performance, the 3050 should have it beat. If your 4GB RX 580 or 470 or even your 1650 broke just yesterday and you need a card right now, go buy the 6500 XT. They're available. They're on Newegg right now. But you might want to use that 30 day return policy and get the 3050 when that drops. In our last video, we looked at way more than just these two graphics cards. Click the link below to find out more. If you guys liked this video, feel free to like and subscribe for future content.